Hey folks, welcome back. So this week we are going to be getting back to a project that I originally started like probably a year or two ago and that is the egg and wagon, the mobile chicken coop. So the plan is that I'm hoping to get all of my laying hens moved out here this spring but the only problem is I don't have a coop to move them into out here. So we're gonna get back to working on that project and see if we can't get that knocked out here in the next couple few weeks. All right, so the next step on this thing is we've got a little bit of a crack here on this, uh, this running gear frame. Seems to be kind of a theme here over the last week or two that we've been doing some, uh, some frame repair on stuff. But this one's a whole lot less critical than the, uh, the pickup truck. So I'm, uh, I'm a little bit less concerned about this one. But before we start going and building stuff on top of here, I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this plate here, get inside and try welding this up a little bit. I may even try squeezing it together, getting a little bit tighter before we weld it, but get that fixed up and uh, that way that'll be in a little bit better shape. And then once we get that done, uh, we're going to uh, lengthen this out a little bit. I think it's called the reach. So we're gonna kinda uh, spread it out. This one in the back, I just went back and was watching my old videos to see which one had uh, more length left in it and which one didn't. This one in the back doesn't really have anything left uh, as I trip over stuff. Uh, doesn't really have anything left. There's maybe another few inches further back in here. But this one up here at the front goes, I think, a good bit of the way up this larger pipe. So we're gonna try spreading this out. I'm gonna have to cut another hole into this inner pipe here so that we can drop the pin down through there. And then uh, we'll probably weld that pin back in place on both of these like it was before.
All right, so we got our frame kind of welded up and stretched out to the length that I'm wanting it. We got the, the pins welded in place here, so that's not gonna pull apart while we're messing with it. And I've been doing some measurements here, trying to figure out how long we can go and how wide and all this sort of stuff. I had it all figured out before uh, when I was messing with this, well, probably a year or two ago. But now I'm getting to a point where I'm actually really gonna be needing this here in the very near future. So um, I'm, I'm having to get right on this project. So we've got about 12 feet from axle to axle. So kind of center of the wheel to center of the wheel. Uh, it's 12 feet. So I think probably if you were gonna turn this into a hay wagon, you might go like another two feet on the front and two feet on the back, and that would give you a 16 foot bed. Because this is gonna be a, a chicken coop, and for the most part, it's just gonna be a big empty box. Um, and with, you know, during, at a night, you might have a couple hundred chickens in here, two, 300 chickens, but that's not all that much weight. So I think I'm gonna push it out to three feet on the front and three feet on the back and have a little bit more overhang here. But because it's not gonna be carrying any, really a whole lot of weight to speak of, I think that's gonna be just fine. And then from the outside of the wheel to the outside of the wheel, we've got six feet. So I think I'm just gonna go a foot on either side of there and take that out to eight feet. So it'll be eight feet wide by 18 feet long. Now for the structure, kind of the, the base structure, uh, that we're going to put on here the initial wood that everything else is going to be built on top of uh, There's going to be two. I guess we'll call them stringers Little one will go from this piece of channel to the piece of channel here another one from that piece of channel to the other piece of channel up at the front and Of course these will have to be 18 feet long because it's you know setting the length for the uh, the bed of our chicken coop and I think those are going to be maybe like a, a four by eight so four by eight by 18 need two of those and then on top of that going crossways uh, I think I'll put some four by fours something like that it's probably a little bit overkill for the uh, the little bit of weight that this is going to be carrying but uh, four by fours across and I think I'll need ten of those so ten four by four by eights and those will go crossways and then for the floor I think I'm going to do some sort of a, a slat floor so that hopefully some of the stuff is gonna fall through and that doesn't have to be cleaned out of here. It'll just kind of drop through. And then as the coop gets moved around, uh, that'll just get deposited all around the field and, and work as some natural fertilizer. Now, as you might assume, I do not have a, uh, a nice straight 18 foot log down here. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of logging later on this week and uh, see if we can't find something that'll work for that and bring that down here. I may actually have what I need for the, the eight foots, um, but either way, if I'm dropping a tree that's you know this size, I'm sure I'll have uh, plenty left over for doing a little bit of four by fours. And of course, we'll, we'll have some framing as well, two by fours for building the, uh, the box of the coop as well. So uh, we'll be doing a little bit of logging here, but that's kind of the gist of the direction that we're heading with this thing. Alrighty, so today we are all the way up here in the backwoods. Uh, the mill house is about a mile that away, so we're, we're way up here on the mountain. And today we're going to try getting ourselves a log to cut our, I'm calling them stringers, for the, uh, the egg and wagon, the, uh, the mobile chicken coop. Now I've spent a little bit of time hiking around up here trying to uh, decide what I want to take for this log, and I think what we're gonna try doing is getting, uh, I think it's that one right there. So it's already down. It is a, a windblown one that got uprooted. And I'm fairly sure that I've actually passed on this one before just because it's in such an awkward place to get to. It's, as you can see, it's on a hillside, it's pretty steep. Because of the size of the log that I need, the, the length of it, uh, there's no way I would pull it up the hill from above, which means I've got to go all the way across here and then drag it from below. Now, it may be a little hard to tell on camera, but this is super rocky in this low part here. And by rocky, I mean like boulders, things that, you know, are several feet across and they're scattered all the way across there. So it can be really tricky trying to get the skid steer across this area 
and uh, over to the other side. I've got the skid steer right over here behind where, where you guys are. I think I've got a line picked out, so uh, we'll, we'll set you up on a tree here or something, and we'll see if we can't get the skid steer across to the other side and start cutting on that thing. Well, that was the easy direction. Now, uh, if we can get this thing cut up and, and get hooked on it and everything still looks good with it, it's not getting rotten or anything. The, uh, the fun part is gonna be dragging a 20 foot long log back across through all that without throwing a track or you know anything like that. So I think what I'm gonna try doing is getting this end down here cut first, getting limbs cut off from that. I get it, I'll probably just cut it as long as I can get anything out of it before it starts branching out too bad and then I'll go up to the upper side and cut that um, because if I cut the upper side first and then come down here it's going to be possibly wanting to push down into my cuts and get the bar pinch so we'll start at the bottom go up to the top cut it at the butt end and uh, see if we can't get this thing out of here. Well, I made it. So going across that kind of bottom area when I drove to go across to get the log, it took maybe 10 minutes or so, something like that. Coming back across that section, dragging this thing behind me, it took the better part of, I don't know, hour and a half, maybe even get closer to two hours. Um, right, at, right at the bat, when I started dragging this across, I almost threw the track. I felt it start going, I stopped, I got out, looked at it, and I, I turned it just a little bit, and it popped back on. And then not two minutes later, I, I really threw it, and that took probably 20 or 30 minutes to get that back on. And then I broke my chain twice, so that was interesting. Uh, fortunately, I had two chains up here, so I was, able to, uh, I was able to make it work. And then once I got it back up to the trail, getting it kind of down the trail, down here to uh, the main thoroughfare going through the farm, Took maybe another 10 minutes to get it down to this point and hopefully going down the rest of the way down through here it shouldn't be too bad because it's it's nice and clear and it's all downhill so hopefully this should go pretty smooth getting it down to the mill house Alrighty, we got our log up here. I think I've got it more or less where I want it. So we're gonna start peeling off some of the slab wood off from here, getting it squared up and see if we can't get ourselves a couple of four by four by 18s.
Alrighty, so the very first pass that we made yielded some uh, <clears throat> less than great looking wood under here. I'm, I'm really hoping that I didn't spend a few hours dragging this thing out of the woods for it to uh, not be usable for these long beams that I need. But I've got it milled down to a kind of an ugly 12 by 12 cant here. And I think what I'm gonna try doing is hopefully this bad stuff doesn't go in too deep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rotate this so that the bad side is up. And I'm gonna take a, a four inch pass off of here. So then I'll be down to a eight by 12 by 18 foot long cant. Then I'll flip it back up on edge so that it's 12 inches tall by eight inches uh, wide. And we'll start peeling off some four inch thick beams off in there. So since it's 12 inches, we'll, we should get three four by eight beams. And hopefully two of those will be usable. That's my plan. I think that's about all I can do with this at this point um, and hopefully get something out of it. And then whatever I end up with, assuming that I get two usable four by eight beams, since the rest of it's in four by something measurements, I'm hoping that I can possibly get some four by four beams out of it that are gonna go side to side on top of these uh, four by eight beam stringers that are going the length of it. Alrighty, well, I think these two beams are gonna do what we need them to do. Uh, they sure as heck are not cabinet grade, but you know what, we aren't building cabinets, we're building a chicken coop, so uh, I think they're gonna do just fine. Now, one thing I've decided is that we can't have three foot overhang on the front. I was hoping we could do that, but I think it's gonna interfere with the tongue. So, that means that we're gonna have four feet off the back here if I keep it at 18, which I think this will be fine because again, this is going to basically just be a large empty box and there's not gonna be that much weight on it. So I think having this cantilevered out here four feet is probably going to be just fine. If it's not, next time I build one, I'll, I'll do it differently and I'll, I'll learn from my mistakes. But I, I think this will be all right having it sticking out like that. So last night we got a few of these 4x4s cut down to size as far as the 4x4 dimension. And so today we're going to see if we can get some of these guys cut to length. I think we're supposed to have a little bit of weather coming in here later this afternoon so I'm not quite sure how much we'll get done on this before that comes in.
Well, folks, I was originally planning on finishing out this week by showing a little bit of video of going and getting this disc harrow that I've got here behind me. But as it turns out, the day that I went and got it, it was blowing and snowing and I was not having bushels of fun going and getting this. So I ended up not doing uh, any, any video of getting it or picking it up or anything like that. Now, this was sort of a, a cheapo thing that I picked up and it needs a little bit of work, but I think it should be well worth the, uh, the time and money put into it. Uh, for one, doing some work around here for garden area and then also for some of the areas around here that where the, uh, the pasture needs a little bit of work as well, uh, this may be nice for kind of breaking up the soil and then putting in some new, uh, new seed or stuff like that. Now, it actually ended up being a little bit bigger than I thought it was gonna be. The guy said he thought it was six foot. And generally when someone says, I think it's a certain size, it's either that size or smaller, but as it turns out, it was actually seven foot. So uh, I think that should be fine. I haven't tried lifting this with the, uh, the old Massey Ferguson yet. Uh, hopefully it'll be able to lift this all right. But if not, I don't know, I might just fix it up and, and turn around and sell it and then pick up a, a six foot, something a little bit smaller, but I don't know, we'll see. Now, before we wrap this up, uh, I don't know if we'll get around to doing more work on this thing next week or not. Uh, I need to pick up some angle iron and I need a bunch of little pieces that are going to go like right in here and that'll connect our stringer beam to these cross pieces up here. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get around to picking that stuff up next week or not, but I have a feeling I've got my work cut out for myself uh, trying to get that disc apart and pull off any of the, uh, the bad parts and uh, get that all sorted out. So we may end up just working on that thing for next week, but I don't know, we'll see. So anyways, that is gonna be it for this week's video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.